John C. Calhoun, Henry Clay, and Daniel Webster all played important roles in the congressional conflict prior to the Civil War that was the Tariff of Abominations and South Carolina's problems with it. According to the Social Studies Teaks textbook written by Jarrett Zimmer and Killerin, a leading spokesman against the tariff was Vice President John C. Calhoun. Daniel Webster denounced John C. Calhoun's nullification theory, telling the Senate that the Union was not a compact of states, but the work of the American people. And, Henry Clay finally proposed a compromise through a reduction in tariffs over the next ten years. The whole problem almost led to the secession of South Carolina. So, to summarize, John C. Calhoun was the vice president who resigned because he believed states had the right to nullify an unconstitutional federal law in its own territory, Daniel Webster believed more in federal rights and national unity, and Henry Clay worked a compromise for South Carolina and federal agreement. This issue of state nullification and the tariff of abominations with South Carolina was a national issue, and a major one too. It can be considered a cause of the Civil War. President Andrew Jackson seemed to strongly believe in the democratic forms of governing. According to the Social Studies Teaks textbook by Jarrett Zimmer and Killerin, he despised the wealthy, privileged bankers, investors, and merchants of the Northeast. Republicans primarily support the wealthy, which seems to be the exact opposite of the common people that Jackson supported. It is safe to conclude that Republicans did not agree with Jackson's views and proposals, such as the Indian Removal Act of 1830. Mormons were a religious group that settled in the United States, and Germans and Irish people were foreign people that settled in America. The Social Studies Teaks book by Jarrett Zimmer and Killerin says, Mormons lived in Utah after being driven out of Ohio, Missouri, and Illinois for unique religious beliefs. The book also says, the Irish potato famine led a massive increase in Irish immigration to the United States, and some Germans came for political reasons, and even more Germans came in the following years for economic opportunities. To sum it all up, Mormons, all American prophets, started their religion in America for religious freedom, even though they were driven out of some states. Irish people immigrated to America because of the Irish potato famine, and Germans immigrated to America for political and economic reasons. The abolitionist movement arguably began after the American Revolution and later became a huge argument between the North, who sought to abolish slavery, and the South, who wanted to keep slavery due to slaves being their source of good economy. According to the Social Studies Teaks textbook by Jarrett Zimmer and Killerin, Mobs sometimes attacked abolitionists, even in the North. Southerners burned anti-slavery pamphlets and excluded them from the mail. expansion was an enlargement to the U.S. caused by the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. Due to this expansion, there were political, economic, and social roots. A political root was the annexation of Texas. As Texas wanted to join the United States as a slave state, Texas did join as a slave state in 1846 after President James K. Polk was elected in 1844. The economic route was the southern economy grew increasingly dependent on King Cotton. Meanwhile, northerners came to believe that the expansion of slavery was negatively impacted on their own slavery. Kentucky Senator Henry Clay proposed a new compromise, which had four parts. The first part was that California would enter the Union as a slave state. The next part was the status of slavery and the rest of the Mexican territory would be decided by the people that lived there. Another was that the slave trade, but not slavery, slavery would be abolished in Washington, D.C. Last, there would be a new Fugitive Slave Act put in place that would enable Southerners to reclaim runaway slaves who had escaped the northern states, escaped to the northern states where slavery was not allowed. Manifest Destiny had a relationship with the westward expansion because it led to the westward migration. At first, it helped lead to the expansion of U.S. territory, but then led to the Mexican-American War because it gave the impression that America deserved more land than the Mexicans did. The Americans thought that God gave them this destiny, which made it acceptable to, to take the land from Mexico. Free blacks were slaves that were freed and no longer thought of as property, but there were still slaves that were thought of as property and nothing more. For both, there were many political, social, and economic factors. Free blacks had no political voice and limited and restricted rights, unlike slaves who still had no political voice but had no rights at all. 
Freed slaves had the lowest social class, limited access to education, and all they had was family religion and resistance to keep them safe. Their religion brought all of them together. The slaves had no social value or identity as they were just viewed as property. The economic factors were they had a low wage and the slaves had made no profit. The slaves were relied on in the southern plantations, and in the northern economy, trade was abolished, so they had a larger population. Three people that made political and social contributions to the U.S. are Harriet Beecher Stowe, John Brown, and Frederick Douglass. Harriet Beecher Stowe was an American author best known for Uncle Tab's Cabin, which helped excite the abolitionist cause and contributed to the outbreak of the Civil War. John Brown was another that contributed to the U.S. Brown, and 21 of his followers attacked the federal weaponry in Harper's Avery Ferry. Their goal was to <laughs> capture supplies and use them to arm slaves for a slave rebellion. Brown was captured during the raid and was later hung, but not before becoming an anti-slavery icon. Frederick Douglass was an American abolitionist, writer, and the most important African-American leader in the 19th century. He was best known for giving lectures to thousands on a range of causes, including women's rights. The reason for the development of the plantation system, the transatlantic slave trade, and the spread of slavery where the plantation system was used for slaves to work on crops. The transatlantic slave trade was created so enslaved African people could be transported from Africa to the Americas, and the spread of slavery was developed because of the southern climate and geography kept slavery going. The impact of the Dred Scott v. Stanford case was that the Supreme Court ruled that Congress cannot limit slaves. Missouri Compromise is unconstitutional. Dred Scott was taken by his owner to North and then back to the South. Scott then sued for his freedom and argued that he could not be taken back into slavery after he had been on free soil. A historical event that resulted in a peaceful resolution was the Purchase of Florida in 1819. The Purchase of Florida happened because the border between Spanish territory and the United States was heated with debate with Spain. The Spanish feared that they would lose Florida, so the Spanish leaders negotiated a settlement. The U.S. states ended up purchasing Florida for $5 million. The causes of the Mexican War were that the U.S. wanted to add Texas to the U.S., but Mexico didn't want them to have it. The Mexican government was encouraging border raids, which led to annexation, and the U.S. wanted some of the land that Mexico had, which caused Mexico to fight to keep their land. The effect, the effect that the U.S.-Mexican War had on the U.S. was that Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming were added to the U.S.